Good afternoon. I haven't made a... <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing already. No, come on. This is a serious one. I've tried to do this introduction three times. We're going to get through it, Jeff. Good afternoon. Do electric cars pose a greater fire risk than petrol or diesel vehicles? The Guardian, Monday the 20th of November, today. Now, before I get into the meat of this video, I am sitting in a diesel car, so I may well go up in smoke during this video. There's also a log pile there. So be prepared for your screen to go blank and for me and the car to burn to death because of what The Guardian is saying in their article today. Jokes aside, <laughs> I'm going to leave it in. I've got, you can't make it up. It's the worst video ever. Come on, Jeff. Pull yourself together, man. Right. This morning, The Guardian posted an article saying, do electric cars pose a greater risk of fire than diesel vehicles? It's basically a whitewash that says that electric... We'll go into it. But what's really funny is just after I printed out this article... Sorry for the long intro. Just after I printed out this article, this happened. That is... Um, my Mercedes is making a funny noise. There's a lorry fire that has happened on the M6 this morning in Staffordshire. Um, I was sent the details immediately by someone who was in the traffic. So I think I got the best photo before the mainstream media did. Thank you for sending me that. I think on the top of that lorry, there's an old Vauxhall Astra, but I might be wrong. So I've put that on my Facebook page this morning before coming out to film. And I've quite simply said, who's stuck on the M6 this morning? Does anyone know anymore? Because I, I don't know anything about it. But once again, the internet has vindicated itself. Um, Hybin Lobdeban said, this happened near me, junction 23 of the M1. Car transporter had three EV crispy cars go up in flames. I like that. Crispy cars instead of crispy creams. Paul says, that wouldn't be an electric car on the back there by any chance, would it? No, Paul, you conspiracy theorist. Steve has said, on the balance of probability, it's unlikely, but it's quite difficult to tell from this angle. Thank you, Steve, for the sensible comment. And then Paul has said, but no normal internal combustion car would catch fire while being transported, would it? Well, we'll see. If my diesel goes up in smoke during the video, then we'll know. Um... And then Hybin, who posted the other comment, said it must have gone over a big bump and clanged the battery. It gets better. Uh, Danny Marsh then says, white smoke. What could that possibly be? If you look at the photo, it does look like the smoke's a bit white, which, well, I don't know what that is. Let's leave that to all the, uh, what was it I said? Internet couch based fire investigation work from home experts, which we all are. Um, Mark Painter says, white smoke simply means there's a new pope. <laughs> the new pope of Staffordshire was crowned this morning. Um, anyway, someone else says that, no, no, that's the fairy dust that the EVs run on. It's good for the environment. Thank you, Jonathan, for clearing that one up. Uh, and then Edward Miller says, is it Pope Elon of Musk? <laughs> David says, it's definitely one of them pesky diesels. As you can see, I am getting warmer in here because of the smoke coming from no i'm not um since evs appeared they've just been committing suicide all over the place this is true as ev fires have become more prevalent diesels have been in the media a lot more for burning um phil tabara says it's probably the dpf filter mark reynolds says i have to say that's awfully brave parking close to it the cars are quite close and then um someone else says might be worth looking into milk float fires in australia due to heat and then being dumped in the outback <laughs> all for the environment tony hill says petrol and diesel cars need heat or an external ignition source to catch fire not sure how a petrol or diesel car is going to do that while being transported on the back of a lorry an ev on the other hand they could catch fire at any time Tony Hill, you are a conspiracy theorist and you need to go to the re-education camp. Um, of course, petrol and diesel cars can randomly combust whilst being transported on the back of a lorry, just as well as EVs can. Trans cars are cars to transit. Trans petrol and diesel cars are EV cars too. All cars are equal when it comes to how likely they are to catch fire, according to the mainstream media. Um, Jonathan says it's a rapid unscheduled disassembly, says Elon. <laughs> Elon Musk says it's a rapid unscheduled disassembly. And then we've got a few other funny things. Ian Farrar has just posted a meme of Elon Musk dropping the mic with a load of flames behind him. Fair enough, Ian. 
the Elon's just checking out, having burnt down the transporter. Um, and then we've got Don, who says, I can't deliver electric cars on my trade insurance policy. It's in the small print. They sneaked it in this year's policy, but they don't tell you this. So, basically... This time it's a transporter. All the cars have gone up in smoke. And that was a five minute, quite funny introduction to my video. So that happened today, this morning, which is the same day that this very serious article from The Guardian has been published. And, and, and this, this gets better. Do electric cars pose a greater fire risk than petrol or diesel vehicles? When a fire ripped through a car park at Luton Airport last month, it set off a round of speculation that an electric vehicle was to blame. Can't think why that was. The theory was quickly doused by the Bedfordshire Fire Service, which said the blaze appeared to have started in a diesel car. Now, hopefully I've printed out my other document. Uh, I haven't. But basically, they haven't actually published the investigation yet. But when someone who emailed me contacted the fire service and said, can I please have a look at your report? The email that came back basically said, we can't tell you anything, but it was definitely caused by a diesel vehicle. Please pay us £86 for the rest of the report. I'm happy to put up the 86 quid. The rumour that it was an electric car refused to be quelled, spreading on social media like, well, wildfire. Good bit of writing there. Well done. Even when these stories are patiently debunked, they come back as zombie myths that refuse to die. Well, I can't think why the Luton Airport one was debunked, because what we had was some very questionable front-on footage that looked like it had been generated by AI, because what we'd seen was a fire that certainly seemed to look quite a lot like a battery fire. But we'll come on to that in a minute, because I think you'll find that The Guardian actually managed to debunk their own article with their own sources that they used to try and debunk the fact that it wasn't an EV. It's, it's complex, but we'll get there. Electric vehicles which will not deliver the environment from damage, but international climate forecasters, <laughs> bullshitters, agree they are a crucial part of the transition from fossil fuels. The Guardian has spoken to experts and looked for hard data where possible to address some of the most common criticisms of electric vehicles. In a series of articles, oh, so they're doing a series of these articles. We will highlight the myths, the realities and the grey areas. The first, oh, this is great. I'm going to get a series of videos out of the Guardian's articles. The first in our series asks, should we be more concerned about fires in electric cars? So they're going to address some of the myths and the grey areas, which is great because I'm going to be doing another video with Lee, the map master and his EV later in the week and uh, driving through a very large grey area known as Wales. The claim. The claims about electric car fires fall into two broad categories. The first is that they're more common and the second is that they're more damaging. If electric cars do pose more of a fire risk than petrol or diesel that would have a host of consequences one would be a requirement for larger car park spaces to stop fires spreading while the conservative mp greg smith who serves on the transport committee said in july that e ev owners should pay higher insurance premiums to cover the extra well they're already paying higher insurance premiums and some people can't insure them but that's probably just a myth or a gray area there are millions of electric cars on the road around the world, so some data on the prevalence of fires is emerging, albeit in piecemeal fashion. That evidence suggests there is no reason to think that EVs are more likely to go up in flames, several experts have said. Indeed, the opposite appears to be true. All the data shows that EVs are just much, much less likely to set on fire than their petrol equivalent, says Colin Walker, the head of transport at the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit think tank. <laughs> uh, tell me that you're not, your opinion isn't completely compromised without telling me that your opinion is completely compromised. If I said to you, what side do you think the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit think tank are on when it comes to electric vehicles? What would you say? And the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit, okay? So they are a non-profit organisation that supports informed debate on energy and climate change issues in the UK. And if you go to their funding, they're funded by the European Climate Foundation, Quadrature Climate Foundation, previously the Grantham Foundation for Protection Environment, Climate Change Collaboration, and the Oak Foundation. Now, I'll dig further into this 
in another video if I feel the need. But alarm bells are already ringing. These guys, uh, well, the European Climate Foundation, I'm pretty sure if I dig through that, we'll find connections to some of the names that we already know. The Quadrature Climate Foundation, again, nice, simple website that pretty much tells us nothing. Then you've got the Grantham Foundation. Climate change is the greatest challenge humanity has ever faced. It's the race of our lives. And then you've got another one that goes over to a private site. You have to request access to get to the Climate Change Collaboration website. Then you've got the Oak Foundation. Now, the Oak Foundation, I seem to remember, popped up in my C40 Cities video as to one of the foundations that is propping up Sadiq Khan and the ULES. So once again... It's all the same faces doing all the same things, and I can guarantee they're pretty much all up to no good. Hmm. Anyway, Colin from the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit Think Tank. The many, many fires that you have for petrol or diesel cars just aren't reported. That's because they don't burn themselves to the ground and require three fire engines and a gigantic bath of water that then comes poisoned and blocks the entire road and shuts down motorways for hours. That's why they're often not reported, because you just put them out and that's that. But we'll come on to that in a minute when we use the Guardian's own sources to... Uh, I don't know, we're not debunking them, we're just having a bit of a laugh today. But here we go. Fires can start in several ways. Car batteries store energy by moving lithium ions inside a battery cell, but if cells are penetrated or if impurities from manufacturing errors or floods cause short circuits, then unwanted chemical reactions can start thermal runaway, where cells heat up rapidly, releasing toxic and flammable gas. In petrol cars, fires can start via electrical faults causing sparks or if the engine overheats because of a fault in the cooling systems, potentially igniting flammable fuel. Right, let's just look at that one for a minute. Electrical vehicles, uh, if a cell has any problem at all, then unwanted chemical reactions can start thermal runaway, where cells heat up rapidly and they have a knock-on effect and each cell heats up and before you know it the entire car is a raging inferno of poisonous noxious gas that you can't get near and water can't put it out on the other hand using his own words electrical faults in a petrol or diesel car can cause sparks in can cause sparks, which are usually beneath the dashboard area, and if the engine overheats because of a fault in the cooling systems, potentially igniting flammable fuel. Notwithstanding the fact that if there was a fire in the cooling system of this car, that is about four and a half foot in front of me, whereas my fuel tank is about six foot behind me. Notwithstanding the fact that this is a diesel car, which needs pressure to ignite. Even if it was a petrol car, by the time the petrol has reached its way from the front to the back, my phone mount just collapsed. I'm going to carry on. By the time the pet, the fire has gone from the front to the back, I've already gone and got someone and put the fire out. Let's put the phone mount back on the windscreen and carry on. In Norway, which has the world's highest proportion of electric car sales, that'll be because they're an extremely wealthy country, uh, because they've got a lot of oil. Irony was writ large upon it. According to the Directorate for Social Security and Emergency Preparedness, the Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency this year found there were 3.8 fires per 100,000 electrical hybrid cars, compared with 68 per 100,000 taking in all fuel types. Uh, so many people keep quoting these figures at me. Australia's Department of Defence funded EV Fire Safe. Oh, okay. Australia's Department of Defence put the money up to fund EV fire safe to look into the question. It was found that there was a 0.0012% chance of passenger electric vehicle battery catching fire. That's actually higher than the percentage chance of dying from coronavirus, isn't it? But we won't talk about that. Compared with a 0.1% chance for internal combustion engine. So this is good. We're getting somewhere now. This is is EV fire safe and they've produced a PDF to assuage everybody's fears about electric vehicle fires. But the funny thing is, if you look at it, it's terrifying. 
so then we've got some caveats and someone says something about lithium iron cousins probably a little bit about incest there he advises people never to leave scooters charging indoors or unattended yes because people have died there's a definite puzzle for firefighters as battery fires require more water to put out can burn almost three times hotter and are more likely to reignite according to ev fire safe some fire departments have experimented with complete immersion of electric cars in water tanks like this one so this is brilliant, isn't it? The Guardian article that has been put out today to make everybody feel like electric car fires are not a threat and are perfectly safe has actually done the opposite. So then they give a verdict, but I don't want to go into the verdict because I want to look at the risks of battery fires as per um, this thing, which is the Australian think tank. Now, they basically say... They've got this step-by-step -step system, and it's really funny. So, they advise that you immobilise the vehicle, so use chocks and make sure the keys are out. And then they say, traction battery fires emit a mix of highly flammable toxic gases, including hydrogen fluoride and hydrogen chloride. So, breathing apparatus should be warm. So, you can't just run up to it with a hose and put it out with water, because you could poison yourself by that point. Next up, you've got a section on debris projectiles. Similarly, the venting of gases from battery cells causes debris projection. So there's a higher chance of debris release coming out of the battery because the battery is emitting burning stuff at high pressure. It literally says the battery cell uh, releases projectiles like when they enter thermal runaway. Now, funnily enough, if you look at the picture there, this is the picture of an EV burning, and I'm just going to drop in the footage of the uh, diesel Land Rover burning from Luton. Can you see the similarities? Because it says that when an EV battery burns, it vents the gases from the battery cells, causing debris projection. And it literally is, look, you can see the flame coming out the side at the front of the vehicle. Which I'm going to put this again, look, it's nothing like the way that diesel one burnt in the Luton airport fire, isn't it? Next up, after this, we need to suppress the flames and cool the battery. Water used to cool the battery pack and knock down flames is what we do. The burning cells within the traction battery casing are difficult to reach. The best practice is to let the battery burn out, if possible, and minimise the reignition risk. What? So best practice is to just let it burn. Hang on a minute. What was that bit there that is said at the start of the article? Uh, electric vehicles will not deliver the environment from damage, but international climate forecasters agree they're a crucial part of the transition from fossil fuels. The best practice is to let the battery burn out. Uh, excellent. Good. Good. Um, after that, you've got to establish a water supply because a greater volume of water may be required to suppress a traction battery fire compared to an internal combustion engine. Up to 4,000 litres of water is used, but EV fires have been known to use 100,000 litres. Let's just go back to that front page again. Electric vehicles will not deliver the environment from damage. No. No, they certainly won't. Not if we've got 100,000 litres of poisoned water. We're only on page one. And these are the guys that the Guardian have used to convince us that they're safe. Let's go over to page two and see if it gets any better. Uh, right. Studies found a lower than expected risk of electrocution from the EV high voltage battery during extrication. So... You're not as likely to get electrocuted when dealing with a electric car fire as they thought that you were. Um, look, it shows it there. See this side? No risk. That's the risk of electrocution from a normal car. And this is the risk of electrocution from an electrical car. Potential risk of electrocution from the voltage battery. Uh, brilliant. And then... That's if you're just trying to put it out with a hose. The next bit is if we're going to submerge the car. The electrocution risk from high voltage submersion. Studies also found that a lower than expected risk of electrocution from the high voltage submersion 
if you wear the appropriate PPE. Do not contact the electric vehicle high voltage or traction battery. Don't touch it. Identify the vehicle and refer to the manufacturer emergency response guide, which hopefully wasn't in the glove box. But basically, if an electrical vehicle is submerged in water because they've submerged it because it was on fire, the risk of you being electrocuted if you go up to that car is lower than they thought. <laughs> I went to an aquarium uh, yesterday with my family and we were talking about electric eels. Would you go in a swimming pool if you knew that there were electric eels in there, even if the risk of you being electrocuted by the electric eels was lower than you thought? Hanging out with all the fish and eels. Yeah. See, there's three eels in there. Yeah. Hey, do you know who would really like it here? Hey. Lee the McMaster. Do you know why? Because he really likes fish and chips. Oh. He should come here, shouldn't he? Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> no. Electrocution risk from high voltage stranded energy. Following fire, a partially intact traction battery or loose or scattered battery cells pose a risk of electrocution from the stranded energy. There is no way to measure or remove stranded energy. Stranded energy. That's scary, that is. I've never heard the word stranded, stranded energy used before. Again, it just says identify the vehicle and refer to the manufacturer response guide. Right. Reignition while towing or loading or transporting. With a non-EV, you just remove the burnt vehicle. That's it. But with an EV or a partially burned traction battery that may have regenerative braking and supply power to the battery and cause reignition, tow on a flatbed. If I owned a flatbed, right, let's say I've got, I don't know, a cheap flatbed truck. It's what, 30 grand? Pretty sure that I'd be telling people that I'm not going to be transporting EVs. And then there's a section on reignition in storage. Store and wreck the vehicle. That's all you have to do. With, with a burnt out normal car like this one, for example. If this had burnt out during the video, which we all thought it would, it's surprising that it hasn't. Uh, a man would come with a truck or a woman, which is 2023. A woman would come with it or a woman pretending to be a man or a man pretending to be a woman. Either which way, I'd say hello. I'd say, yep, there's the car, the burnt hulk of it. Can you take it away? And he'd probably take it to somewhere like CRS Recycling in Mulvam and they'd weigh it in. I think that's what happens. Uh, but if it was an electrical vehicle, it needs to be stored 15 metres away from all other things. And you need to monitor it for heat, vapour and flames for an extended period. So let's say I own a wrecking yard and time is money and space is money. And I've got loads of cars jam packed in there. And then someone comes along and says, can you take in this EV? Yeah, I'll take the EV. No worries. What do I need to do? You need to clear a 15 metre radius around it. Well, I can't do that because I've got all the other cars there and that's money. No, thanks. I'm not taking your EV. No chance. Unless you pay me 15 metres worth of revenue for the time that it's here and a danger charge as well. It's going to get very expensive to scrap these EVs. And interestingly, there was another lorry fire earlier in the year. And once again, it could well have been a diesel or a petrol. We don't know. It wasn't in the news. But what was in the news was the fact that the police and fire service were using thermal recognition cameras to monitor the heat of the wreck after they put it out. Now, why would they need to do that if it was a diesel or a petrol car that was on fire and they could just store and wreck the vehicle as per the advice from the EV fire people? Brilliant. So... Thank you very much, The Guardian, for putting together the first in a series of articles to uh, waylay some of the myths and grey areas on electric cars. I am feeling much, much better about electric vehicle fires since you've written that article and I've had a look at some of your sources. Part of the reason why I feel really good about electric vehicle fires is because I don't own one. Mine's a diesel. Sadly, uh, the diesel has not caught fire, nor has the log pile. So, those of you that don't like my videos, I apologise that I did not burn to death for this one. However, there's a road trip coming up later in the week in this car. So, your luck might be in in a few days' time. Thank you very much, everybody, for being part of this uh, quite haphazard 
not fire hazard, quite a haphazard video that ended up being a lot more fun than I expected. I'll look forward to the next instalment from The Guardian. Thanks for watching.